Greetings, people. It's Jared here, Wolfgang1, back to do another Transformers review. Um, so following on from um, last week's review of Generation 1 Optimus Prime, um, I've been requested by a, a young gentleman by the name of Jordan Ong on Facebook to review his arch nemesis Generation 1 Megatron. Now, I'm just going to get this out of the way. This is a... Um, this is a, a special one for me because this was the first review I ever did um, when I started Transformers Reviews on YouTube. Um, and then I reduxed it a little while later. I deleted both those videos. I reduxed it again for a third time when I when I started doing uh, titles and credits at the end of my videos and everything like that. And then um, I've, I've closed that playlist down. I'm starting a new one. And I've not looked at this figure now for about 10 years, maybe more. So it'll be a pleasure to take... A look at this one final time for the fourth time one final time so let's take a look at it. this is generation one megatron okay right so um here is megatron's uh box now it's the takara reissue release um i never had g1 megatron as a kid um I, i'm not sure if he came out in 1984 or 1985 in in this country i think it was 84 um but he must have been a, um very 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 hard to get hold of um equally so if not more so than than optimus prime um so this was my first ever megatron and um i bought this back in 2008 something like that um and i remember how much exactly i paid for it. i paid 55 pound on a buy it now and i ummed and ahed about whether or not i was going to do it or not um but i decided to bite the bullet and um so yeah this was my first g1 megatron now this one comes with a few different things that well i'm um, a few different things I'm, I'm assuming there i mean um uh but i know he definitely comes with a couple of things that the, uh, the western release didn't come with and i'll show those in a minute um the box i think this might be the uh dreamwave artwork i'm not entirely sure but i do like the artwork on this um cover it's just a shame really that the artwork that they use is not entirely reflective of the figure itself now i've I've sung this figure's praises on more than one occasion. This is like the fourth time I've done this review, and this will be the last time I do this review. Um, I've sung this figure's praises on more than one occasion, um, and it's been 10 years since I reviewed it, easily, more than 10 years. Um, and now I think I'm going to be able to be a little bit more, as much as I still love it, much like Prime, as much as I still love it, I am able to be a little bit more critical about this now. So the um, Takara release. So it comes with... Um, all these uh, fact file pullout things on the inside gives you information about a lot of shit. There's some fantastic, fantastic artwork of all the Megatrons from various continuities right there. Sorry about the glare from my light, but sod it. Some fantastic artwork just there. Um, there's numerous fact file things on different figures, um, some more G1s that they're releasing or re-releasing. And uh, yeah, it's all in Japanese, so I can't read a word of it, but there we are. Again, some great artwork just there. And uh, just showing you a couple of little things that he can do with his um, energy mace and sort of shit like that. It's a double box. Um, so the Takara reissues all came in a box. I think the Hasbro reissues came also came in these style boxes as well. But they were a little bit more um, westernized, shall I say. Um, I don't think they released Megatron in the, in the western set. But this one comes in a double book. Now... And that's right for him and all his accessories and everything like that. Now, I haven't got him in the box because trying to get him in and out of the box and the double trays and everything like that, I mean, the insides of this box is starting to fall apart a little bit and that, and it's a pain in the ass to do it. So I thought, no, I'm just going to show the box and then I'm going to get straight on into the accessories and, and things like that. So that's that's the um, that's the Takara box right there. £55 on a bite now. I think the postage was maybe up to about tenner. So £65 all in all for a G1 Megatron. I know it's a reissue. Um, but these were going for a lot more back then, these, these Takara issues. So I'm glad I got hold of it when I did. So there we are. I'm not exactly sure when the reissue was released. It might have been 2008, might have been beforehand, but that's, that's when I bought it. So let's have a look at the accessories. He comes with, um, he comes with this, which is the, um, barrel for his, uh, combined Wolf of P38 mode, the, the silencer. That's it. That's the silencer. There's another little bit that tacks on to the barrel just here, um, which I'll come on to in a bit. He comes with um, his iconic fusion cannon, which looks good on the um, the gun, not so good on the robot. Um, it really is like massively, massively too big for the robot, but I'll show that in a minute. 
Um, he came with uh, one energy mace. Now, I don't know if the Western release came with this or not. Let me get that a little bit closer. I don't know if the Western release came with this or not, um, but this is just like a nice little thing that you plug into his hand and pretend he's got the energy mace from that one episode where he used it. Um, not sure if the Western release came with this or not, but it comes with a very, very nice chrome sword. I'll say very nice. There's some uh, marks on it that I can't get off, but that's all right. It's a I've never used this really for Megatron ever. Uh, I've taken it out of the box a few times and things like that. There's a little bit of uh, chrome wear just on the edge, just like that. And a little bit again on that side there. But apart from that, a very nice chrome sword. He comes with a gun. Um, well, they say it's a gun. Uh, again, it's got my fingerprints all over it. Um, not really a hell of a lot to say about this. This is quite a weird little thing. Um, he's never... He never used it in the cartoon. I've, I've never really used it for him at all. It plugs into his hand just on this little nub just at the end. But, you know, for an accessory, whatever. Um, he comes with this, which splits into about three pieces. And this is the uh, the stock for his combined gun mode, uh, which I will show off in, in a minute. But it is, it is very... The gun mode is massive. Um, but there we are. Uh, yes, that combines into about three pieces. And all the um, ex um, external gun pieces form a little uh, base weapon thing, which is, you know, all right for what it is, but still a bit shit. It's like one of those things where they decided, we've got all these different parts, what are we going to do with all these parts? And finally, something that I know that the Western release definitely didn't come with, is a series of these, which, um, because this is the Dakara release, he's got a spring-loaded mechanism in him, which means if I took any one of these off the sprue and stuck it, in this little part just here, and then press the trigger, he would launch one of these projectiles. Um, I've never, it comes with two sprues of them. I've never taken any of them off the sprue. I don't intend to, um, because that's a gimmick for me that I couldn't really care too much about. So yeah, that's all the accessories out of the way. Uh, accessories that you may or may not use or anything like that. So now, with all that out of the way, oh, he came with the instructions as well, but I don't know what I've fucking done with him, so don't worry about it. With all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's go through this charade one more time. Here is G1 Megatron. Now, he is a Walther P38 pistol. I was going to do some history on the Walther P38 and, and regale you with the history of it, but I forgot to do it, and I dare say whatever I said would sound just a bit sort of crap. Um, so he transforms into a Walther P-38, uh, made popular by the television series The Man and Uncle, which I think is what the external parts are supposed to represent. Um, in the in the cartoon, he never transformed solely into this version of the gun. It was always the combined Walther P-38. Um, he did show up like this a couple of times in the UK Marvel comics, I think in the US comics as well. Um, but other than that, yeah, so you can add his... Uh, thing just here his sight for his gun on top of him like that and he, he showed up a couple of times in the comics like that with uh, that guy who was uh, a bank robber or something like that and used megatron to rob banks um yeah let's take that off let's talk about this so the chrome is still good after all these years again i've tried cleaning it up i don't really see the thing is i don't mess around with this figure that often um and it's still got like loads of like sort of smudge marks of my fingerprints and that all over the chrome um and that sort of you know I, I don't really tend to mess around with this that often and the reason i don't is because the build on this figure is not the best in the world when i first bought this figure and took it out the box one thing that became very very apparent was how loose this section was which eventually forms his right arm that holds the fusion cannon from the outset from the moment i took it out the box the joint that it sits on is very loose and that's only got worse over time the left side has followed suit and the legs attached to their pins are starting, one of them is loose out of the box, the other one is starting to follow suit. So the actual build quality, when he's in robot mode, this feels very, very, very flimsy now. Um, if it breaks, I'll be heartbroken, but eventually I would just buy another one. If this was an original G1 and it broke, I would be heartbroken and I doubt I would necessarily get over it as quickly, quickly or as easily. But I don't know if that's because of the, of the design of the mold. I don't know if that's just or whether all Megatrons and that eventually either become loose in the same places or are immediately loose in those places. I don't know. The Fusion Cannon 
um, hold uh, weighs the arm down a lot. So I think that the, the pressure on the joint is exacerbated by having the fusion cannon on top of it. Um, apart from that, he's uh, got some nice stickers on. The stickers still hold up really well. The the you know black solid plastic for the legs just here. Some die cast just here. There's actually quite a bit of die cast in this figure, um, which gives it a nice weighty feel in the hand. Um, yeah, so let's... <laughs> I do, I do still really, really like this figure. And I'll tell you the reason I like it, and this is something that I said in the last time I reviewed this, I think back in 2010, my third, my third attempt at reviewing it, uh, 2010, 2011, is the one thing I really like about this figure. Yes, it's a diaclone. Sorry, it's not a diaclone. It's a Microman um, from Takara. Micro change or Microman or something like that um, absorbed into the Transformers line like the diaclone was. The thing that I like about this figure is at the core of it, essentially, how unimaginably mental this is, right? Somebody sat there and went, I'm going to take a P Walther P38 pistol and I'm going to turn it into a bipedal robot. Just from the design of it, you would think that that would not lend itself to that kind of fucking about. Someone... At Takara managed it though, and that person therefore is mental as fuck. Um, and we're sitting here reaping the rewards of that sort of nearly 40 years later. This thing is crazy. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna add his um his accessories for the gun so you can see how big the gun is. Um so you stick the stock on the back of the uh thing just here. Other way would be good. Oh no, no, I had it right the first time. Just like that. Add the scope to the top and then combine these two parts just here and then oh, fuck off and slide this section with the uh, the cutout over the barrel and the nub just there there we are make sure everything is where it should be and yeah I'm gonna have to going to have to pull the, the camera back because this thing is so bloody big. There we are. That is Generation 1 Megatron in his combined gun mode. Again, completely unnecessary, completely mental. Um, although if I was a hired killer, um, this would probably be my cheeky gun of choice if it had a decent enough range. Um, this thing is... Unres unashamedly fucking ridiculous but it's awesome um <laughs> there's not there's not a lot else i can say about that it's it's it is what it is it's um yeah i mean i, can't, I i've had to test um I've, uh, sorry i can't get my words out it's like sort of nearly half past midnight um i've had to pan the camera back just to get this in shot that's how ridiculous this is um but also a lot of fun to have in hand so you know, there we are. So let's take off all these parts again. And let's show you the tiny little um, playset thing that he comes with. Okay, so let's get all that out of the way. Let's get Megatron back into gun mode. There we are. Set Megatron off to one side. Zoom the camera back in. Back in, please. Thank you. Right. So start off with this section just here, which is the base. And then split these parts and then bring them down and out like that, okay? So that's going to form the base right there, okay? Then it's always a question of what the hell do you do with all this stuff? And it's always quite difficult to remember. Um, so on here, you've got these little uh, sections just here that you need to flip out. All being um, cast in black plastic as well, it's a little bit difficult to see what you're doing. Thank God for my light just here. Fold these out to the sides, and these act as like little handlebars things, which, you know, I suppose that's cool. Um, then you want to take this section, the uh, the silencer, and fold this peg down. Stick this peg in this hole just here. And that's on a sort of, it can go up, it can go down, it can go side to side, okay? Then take this section with this little hole and plug it into the bottom of this just here. And then stick this section in the back of this section just here. 
and then stick the fusion cannon if you want on the top and there you have um a, a base weapon thing which looks a little bit ridiculous it looks like a a star wars blaster on steroids um but there we are there's I mean, I've, I've tried it. You can get these into Megatron's hands and you can stand at the back of it. I might show that off later if I can be fucked. Um, but yeah, I mean, th this, this is all right. I mean, if, if, you've, if you're playing with your G1 Transformers as a kid and you wanted to like sort of build out the Decepticon base or something and you have this standing outside as a sentry gun, then yeah, sure, why not? Um, but this to me just screams off, we've got all these external parts left over for the gun. What on earth are we going to do with them? I know. Let's just stick them all on top of one another and hope for the best. And that is exactly the reaction that you get when you hope for the best, ladies and gentlemen. It's not the best thing. It's far from the worst thing in the world. I mean, as attack modes go, Megatron's got like sort of three of them. Standard gun, combined gun, and then this thing to stand behind. So, you know, he's doing all right for himself. Um, and this is still not as bad as some of the attack modes you see when you stick a gun on top of an Autobot car and they go, that's the attack mode. No, that shit. This is... Not shit, it's ridiculous. It's outrageously ridiculous, but not as shit as the other ones. So that's that's that, right? <laughs> so I'm going to set that off to one side, and we're going to talk about G1 Megatron's transformation. So how do you turn this Walther P38 pistol into a bipedal robot? Well, we start off by taking this bottom section here, this bottom section just here and sliding that forwards on both sides. Okay, so that will form the feet. That's their die cast section right there. And then we want to extend the handle of the gun like that. So you can see all the, all the metal that's tarnished just here. I've tried cleaning that up, um, but I've had no, had no joy with that. Um, so that will eventually form his legs. And then you want to bring these sections out to the side like this. Okay. So, you could have like a, it could be a walking gun himself if you want it to be. Um, and this way it gets a little bit mental. So you want to bring the this section down and like that. Bring this section just here back and then split it apart. Okay. Disconnect the barrel from the top of the chamber like that. And then lift the barrel, uh, automatically lift up, and that will show his like rib cage and everything like that. Spin this out to the side, and then spin the chest section around. Now, what you're supposed to do is fold the barrel then under, under just like that. And then Megatron is supposed to have his barrel under his thing. I do it a little bit differently. Okay, so ignore this this transformation step. So we're going to bring the barrel back out like this. Okay. Hey, right. Then, with this section here, set, split this section, and then there's a black tab just here that you want to bring out for the hand, and do that on both sides. And then this metal bar just here that, that the arms are resting on wants to go directly into this bit just here. So you want to bring the entire assembly up, and then lock it into place like that and then with this section the barrel and um, to try and resemble his g1 what i do is i bring that around and up like that and there we have i don't know how much i got of that on camera ladies and gentlemen but you know i'm not doing it again there we have g1 megatron in his very very compromised and very awkward looking robot mode if you if you want to make it look like he's not going to be buried in a y-shaped coffin then bring his legs forward a little bit on those on those hinges and there we are. That is Generation 1 Megatron in his robot mode. And can I say, right, the robot mode compared to the gun is massively, massively compromised. No no wonder they took such liberties with his animation model because trying to make any convince anyone that this was the leader of the Decepticons was going to be a stretch, right, in a cartoon format. I mean... He's got a set of eyebrows on him just here and his um his eyebrows just here and like his, his forehead here that any Essex girl would be proud of, right? Well, jealous of, I should say. Um now even without the fusion cannon, 
this arm is is all right this arm look at that L incredibly loose the leg just there very very loose this one here also very very loose so he's seen better days but he wasn't in tip-top condition when i bought him and he was uh, brand new in sealed box when i bought him okay so if you want him to recreate that thing from that time in that um, cartoon then just plug this into the side of his hand oh yeah focus you fucker and uh he's got his energy mace although mine doesn't want to sit in there the way it should do but then again i've never used it before so you know whatever well, that's not working um and he'll also fit that strange gun and that that sword that i mentioned earlier allegedly will fit into the side of his hands um again uh some uh chrome chipping just here on the arm i've never noticed that before but then again this was bound to happen sooner or later um and i still love him ladies and gentlemen i still love this toy and I, if i'd had this as a kid i guarantee this thing would have been in fucking pieces right um i still love it but looking at it objectively because I, apparently i couldn't do that 10 years ago um let's be honest here he's not brilliant is he he's that robot mode yes i'm incredibly impressed that someone at takara went I'm turning a Walther P38 pistol into a bipedal robot. I am very, very impressed with the engineering. I'm very, very impressed with how you, you sat there and you, you consciously worked out what you were doing. However, the end result is, is, um, is left a little bit wanting. But then again, this toy was designed in what, 1980, 1981, something like that, before it became part of the Transformers in two, uh, 1984. So I can give them a little bit of slack for that. Um, so put his fusion cannon on his arm, and if I lift up his arm, look what happens. That, there, yeah, that is fucked with a capital F. Nothing I can do about it. So he normally just stays like that, and I, I hardly ever touch this guy, ladies and gentlemen. I hardly ever touch it, and yet this is getting progressively, progressively worse as the years go on, which I think is incredible. Um, just like this figure is. I know it's not the best figure in the world. I know that the only time now that we've got a... a Megatron that turns into a gun was the Masterpiece line, uh, Masterpiece 5 and Masterpiece 36, the first, second version. I've, I've got Masterpiece 36. I've never transformed it because I don't want the hassle of, of like sort of having to take like a month off work to do it. But Masterpiece Megatron looks wonderful. And the fusion cannon is in proportion to the robot and the gun, whereas on this version, it really isn't. Um, that that primary weapon the fusion cannon is too big for the robot it's it's absolutely ridiculously massive um and i think has a severe impact on that joint despite all these flaws and despite the fact that he is awkward as fuck i mean look look at the look at the way that the his, his crutch is the trigger right which has been parodied and taken the piss out of on, on numerous um on numerous programs like robot chicken for example and like sort of parodies and things like that um the 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 hips just here are dodgy there's die cast here there's die cast in this in this back section just here and in the spine so in the spine and in the feet so this, this figure's a heavy figure right he's a, he's a heavy heavy figure he doesn't look brilliant in robot mode but nostalgia is a wonderful thing ladies and gentlemen and i think he's absolutely awesome so you know I can look at I can look at them objectively and say you know there are certain things that you know to my mind now don't work but I couldn't care less because I've got a G1 Megatron if this thing dies I'll just get another one but I've got a G1 Megatron and this thing is almost I would say not quite um, this is almost iconic as his uh, his counterpart Optimus Prime um, this is very much a product of the 1980s ladies and gentlemen um, and he is brilliant absolutely fantastic shit in a certain in a certain way um but he totally owns it he owns that shitness and uh much respect to him for 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 doing so so ladies and gentlemen that is my review for generation one megatron this will be the last time that i review generation one megatron in my lifetime probably i want to extend a massive thank you to jordan ong who requested uh, this figure uh, this review for me um, if anyone's not familiar with Jordan, Jordan is very active, and I mean very active, in the uh, Transformer groups on Facebook. So head over to Facebook, uh, check out his posts and everything like that. 
Um, and he's, he's a really sweet guy, really nice guy. So, Jordan, hope you enjoyed this review. This one was for you. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I shall see you all next week for another Transformers review that was requested of me by the one and only Tatamus Prime. And I'm looking forward to doing that one. So, until then, ladies and gentlemen, this is Gerard Gavin Barry, also known as Wolfgang One, with G1 Megatron owning his shitness, saying uh, we're back at some point soon. Until then, take care. Two girls.